Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus, dear friends, that little song we just sang is pure gospel. It's all about what Jesus has done for me, for you. It is gospel in telling us the good news that in spite of what we have done, in spite of what the world is all about, Jesus loves us. There can be no better message, no better news than to hear that simple song told over and over and over again. Our world is a mess. That's nothing new to you. Our world has its issues. And the fact that it really does not love life, we, the church, are caught in a quandary. For we, the church, are the ones who proclaim life. And if we do not proclaim it, who will? You may know the name of Martin Niemöller. Martin Niemöller was a German Lutheran pastor imprisoned for opposing the Nazis in the 1930s. And he had a, a famous quote that many have heard. And it goes like this, and I quote, In Germany, they first came for the communists, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for the Jews, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a trade unionist. Then they came for the Catholics, and I didn't speak up because I was a Protestant. Then they came for me, and by that time, no one was left to speak up. Those are powerful words in our day and age when we must deal with things like abortion and euthanasia and physician-assisted suicide. If we, the church, are not going to speak up, who's going to be left to speak up? Martin Niemöller discovered by his own admission that because he didn't speak up, there was no one left. How tragic that is. And yet we have a message, my friends, we have a message, John, Jesus tells us in John chapter 10. The thief comes only to kill and steal and destroy. But I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. Life, that's what you and I have. We have the full life in Jesus Christ. It's a full life with a guiltless past. Now guilt is a terrible thing to bear. Sometimes it crushes people to the point that life becomes an unbearable burden, and we have seen that throughout Scripture. King David says in Psalm 38, my guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. And we've all done things that causes us terrible guilt. We can be like David or Peter or Judas Sometimes that guilt can be more than we can bear. We don't know what to do with it. We don't know how to handle it. And it's at times like that that we come back to that message that we have heard time and time again that the only way to handle guilt is to take it to the cross. The cross. Because Jesus bore the guilt of our sins on that cross. It's why you will always see in every Lutheran church you enter a cross, a cross that is central. Not that we worship an empty cross, but it's there as a reminder to us that it's on that cross that Jesus shed his blood to pay for the guilt of our sins, that which we know and we struggle with. But we're looking for the full life that Jesus gives, that abundant life. The full life is a life with a joyful present. Our joy is not found in our circumstances. 
but in Jesus, because it is Jesus who gives life, even when others would seek to take it away. Part of the world's problems is the fact that we always think we are in charge when we are not. Thus, we believe we have the right to end life when it's not our choice to make. So whether it's abortion or euthanasia or physician-assisted suicide, our lives belong to God. He gives life, and he and he alone should decide when that life ends. Yet it's tough. We get into situations that we feel like the only way out is to end this life. We get into those circumstances, perhaps not even of our own doing, where we struggle and we wonder and we say, if this is life, I don't want any part of it. And yet, we go back to the cross. We go back to the one who can help us through those difficult times. James tells us, to rejoice in our trials. He writes, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And I know, sometimes you say, I, I've got enough perseverance. I've got enough. I don't need any more testing. I don't need any more of this. I need a way out. And we come to the cross and we dump our burdens at the foot of the cross. Even as St. Paul tells us in Philippians to rejoice in the Lord always. And we say, man, Paul, he must have been nuts. How can you rejoice in the Lord always? And yet Paul was writing from prison, a dungeon, most likely. And he's writing to the church in Philippi saying, this is what you need to do. You need to rejoice in the Lord always. We don't rejoice in our circumstances because our circumstances can really get us down. Perhaps you're battling cancer. Perhaps you've got another disease. Perhaps you're, you've got the aches and pains that come when you hit a certain age and you're tired of it. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord Always. Don't rejoice in your circumstances because they're not always so pleasant. But rejoice in the Lord. We're looking for that full life. And the full life realizes that each day is a gift. And we live it to the full to glorify God. The psalmist writes in Psalm 118 This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. God has made this day for you and for me. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Because we know what's ahead. Because the full life, the abundant life, is a life with a fearless future. A full life gets stolen because of what we fear the future will bring. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. We don't know what 2020 is going to bring us, but we know who's already in this new year. We don't know what the election in November will bring us, but we know that our God is still king of the universe. And we know that he's there providing that full life for you and me. So it may be the prospect of failing health or failing finances, difficulties of all sorts that leave many people feeling hopeless and helpless, not to mention no prospects for a full life. But you and I have those prospects. We live in a sinful world that has no sense of the sanctity of human life. We live in a world that deems that it controls whether we live or whether we die. But Jesus reminds us in Matthew, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, 
or about your body, what you will wear. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Wow. God has promised us that our future is bright because it includes a home with him. We don't know when the Lord is going to take us home. But we know where that home is. And we know who we're going to spend that eternity with. You just have to love Paul when he writes in 2 Timothy 4, Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Yeah, Paul looked forward to what Jesus was going to give to him. And Jesus reminds us in John 14, in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Is that not the good news? Does that not follow up nicely with Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Is it not that encouragement that whatever the tomorrows of our lives bring, Jesus is in those tomorrows. I'm sure most of you have heard the song written and sung years ago by Bill Gaither. It's a simple song entitled Because He Lives. Gaither writes, Because He Lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He Lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future. Life is worth the living just because he lives. My dear friends in Christ, that's what Easter is all about. That's why we preach Christ crucified and risen because he lives. We shall. Someone once said, life without Christ has a hopeless end. Life with Christ is an endless hope. That's the abundant life. I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly, Jesus promises us. That's what you and I have. And that's why we get together together and work together over these next, yeah, however long, the Lord gives us together. We don't know those answers either, but we know that our God is already in those answers. We know he's already chosen someone who will be the next shepherd of the flock here. We know that. What do we have to do? Be patient. Wait. Trust in the Lord. And know that our future with Christ is an endless hope. To him be the glory for all the great things he has done. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus.